Gracious Heavenly Father, we give thanks as we come before you today to hear your words. Allowing your words to come into our hearts in this receiving the comfort that we need and require today. Continue to sustain us with your Holy Spirit and your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Was comforted. Isaac was going through much in his life, as many of us go through much. We have good times and we have bad times. And they seem to be intertwined together. And sometimes it's difficult to know when the bad times will become the good times and vice versa. But we need to seek comfort in the times that happen in our lives, that have happened in our lives, and will continue to happen throughout our lives. But this word was comforted. It's about Isaac. It's those final words in the text that we heard. And so Isaac was comforted after his mother's death. He had been through much, but what he was going through then was the mourning for his mother. His father was still alive, but his mother, who meant so much to him, and especially understanding the story of what his mother had to go through to help him, he was grieving. He was going through a terrible time of mourning. And yet, it was through hearing this story, the story of how he would meet his wife. The ancient paths, or the dots. Very often when we go through difficulty, we can look at the dots in our lives. And this comes from Steve Jobs, who was the founder of Macintosh. Your iPhone, the iPhone is filming this right now. And they asked Steve Jobs when he was on his deathbed about his idea of faith. And he recounted a story that he had told to the university. He said, when I go through a difficult time, I look at my life as a series of dots. And I look at the dots and I see how they're all connected. The good times and the bad times. And I can go back to when I was a child and I can even go back to my father and see how all the dots connect to today. And if all of the dots connect till today, won't they continue to connect? So I ask you, how are the dots in your life? How are the dots in your life, in your family's life, your children's life, and your ancestors' life? We as followers of faith, we as followers of the scriptures, can go back all the way to Jesus Christ who gives us his stories and his theology and his ideology of how to live. And very often he would speak from the Torah. He would go back all the way to Abraham and beyond and see how the dots connect. Jesus is speaking to his people about finding rest. Isaac found rest and comfort from the story that he was told by his father's servant. Jesus says to us in verse 28, Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Rest is to refresh the soul. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. The yoke is what they would put on an ox or a cow or even a horse. And they would have sometimes a dual yoke where they would be matched, where you put two animals of equal strength side by side. But what Jesus is talking about is that training yoke, to train the younger cows and the younger oxen. For us to be trained, we need to come along with someone who has the strength of the scriptures within them. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. We are called to take the yoke of Jesus Christ, the yoke of the scriptures, and to learn from them. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest. Jesus Christ says that he will give us rest, and that we will find rest. And in this case, the word rest is a temporary rest of respite. But where does he get these words from? Very often what Jesus is quoting, he's quoting from his Bible. And if we read where this text comes from, it comes from Jeremiah 6, beginning at verse 16. It's a beautiful story. There are many beautiful stories in the Bible. 
You know, we're very quick to watch programs on television that are a story that it just about to the end and they stop and say, stay tuned for next week. And we can't wait for the following week to hear the rest of the story. But this world is in a state of, when it comes to those biblical, oh, well, I've heard those before. But what Jesus is saying, we need to follow these ancient paths of the stories and reignite them and make them come alive in our own lives. So in Jeremiah 6, 16, which he quotes from, this is what it says. This is what the Lord says, stand by the way and seek and ask for the ancient paths. The ancient paths, the story of the old, where the good way is and walk in it. Are we walking in the ancient paths, the story of the old, the faith that we read about in this text from Genesis, the first book of our Bible, where the good way is and walk in it, then you will find a resting place for your souls. That's what Jesus Christ said to them. Then you will find a resting place for your souls. But they said, we will not walk in it. And I said, watch them over you, saying, listen to the sound of the trumpet, but they say, we will not listen. Therefore, hear you nations, and know you congregation, what is among you. Hear, earth, behold, I am bringing disaster on the people, the fruit of their plans, because they have not listened to my words, and as for my law, they have also rejected it. History repeats itself, time and time again, over and over again. The people refuse to listen and hear the word of God. To allow the stories of Jesus Christ, the stories of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and Esau and Joseph and Jesse and Solomon. And of course, Jeremiah being from the Old Testament and the law, we talked about this last week, it meant death. But as we learned from last week, it's not just the body that dies eventually, it's our soul and our spirit that dies, and that's what we have to be careful of. Jesus Christ is asking us to hear the word of God, to allow our souls to be open, and to take him upon us. To receive the rest today, not just to receive the rest when we die, as it says in Revelation 14, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. What works of yours will follow you? In this text from verses 16, 17, all the way up to 19, where Jesus Christ is talking to the people, and he says, I compare this generation to children sitting in the marketplace, calling to one another, we played the flute and you did not dance, we wailed and you did not mourn. What came to mind is that we have baptisms, and we go through the motions of singing and dancing, and then we soon forget. We gather and we wail and we mourn at funerals. And many sit and stand, not having any idea of the stories that we're reading, the Word of God that we're reading. How can somebody be comforted at a funeral if they don't understand the Word of God being spoken to them, these ancient paths? We are living in a society that does not know the biblical history. How can they be comforted with the hope and the faith if they do not know it? He goes on to say, and yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. And very often we say, well, deeds, that's what we do. But the true meaning here is works, children, descendants. How is our own wisdom, or is it the wisdom of God, is vindicated by our children, our descendants. The people's wisdom shows the outcome of their children. We can see that by how a child acts in many cases, how they're brought up. But we also can see it in a child growing up mourning the loss of their parent, without the comfort of understanding the scriptures that are laid out in front of them, the ancient paths of hope and peace and rest.
This text that we heard from Genesis, it's a long story. And yet this story is the third time in two chapters that it is said. And then it would be repeated again by the master of Abraham to Isaac a fourth time and a fifth time. Because it sets precedence for our hope and our faith and our livelihood and our generations to follow. It also becomes a fulfillment of prophecy to one and to the many nations to comfort it. It begins, so he, which is Eliza, which is the main servant of Abraham, and he sits down and he begins to speak of what has just happened to him over these past few days. But what we don't read is that when he sits down, he has been invited by Laban, who is the brother-in-law, Rebecca's brother. He says, come, let us eat. Let us have a great feast. And what does he say? Wait, before we eat, let me tell you a story. Before you have lunch today, you've sat and you've listened to this beautiful story of hope and of faith, of dedication and of commitment. That first Abraham had to be committed in his faith to say to God, yes, I will sacrifice my one and only son, Isaac, to you. And in doing that, he was given the ram and he received his promise. The servant had to go into another land and approach a young lady and ask her if she would feed his camels and give them a drink and come and be the wife of his master's son. Would any of you go and do that today? Well, you'd probably be put in jail. But that's a scary thought. And yet, not too long ago, a young man came up these stairs looking to do God's work. And it almost seems next time you know, he's up here preaching to you. Any of you know that story? The guy looking for help for the Shelby County High School reunion. And he comes and he stands at the back door and he sees the love of his life. And he marries her. I didn't have to send a servant to say, hey, go get that one for me, will you? But can we not see how God provides? Each week, each day, Steve and I talk about the little miracles that happen in this church. The provision. Yes, there is still much to be done. There's still the kids that are going to sit over there and color that image on the back page with the text. But in the meantime, you can take that home and you can give it to your children and say, Color this in and let me tell you a story. And they might say, but what happens in the end? Well, you'll have to wait till next week. And the following week. And week after week after week, the story expands itself into the heritage that we are all part of. This sounds easy. But it's difficult. If it was easy, we wouldn't have Romans 7, verses 15 to 25. Thank you, Jeffrey. It's a difficult reading. It reminds me of Schwarzkopf when he said, There's things we know, and there's things we don't know. And there's things we think we know, and there's things we don't know, because we think we know, and we hope to know, but we don't know. Or something like that. I'm not sure. I don't know. But how often in our own lives do we hope to do something? We know better that we should do something, and other things get in the way. Those become lessons to us, but hopefully it will not happen again. We know it will happen again. But we need to be rescued from this body of death that we talked about. Not so much the body, but the spiritual body. With my mind, I am a slave to the law of God. This law is the spiritual law. Our body is aware of this law of the commandments, which makes us aware of what we should do. But is it a constant struggle back and forth? 
in each and every one of us. But if we can allow the ancient paths to be in our lives by reading the scriptures, and I encourage you to go home today at some point, it could be when you're turning down the bed and propping up the pillows, to read all of chapter 24, read part of chapter 23, and take a peek at next week. And see how these stories in the Bible become real again. Real again in your own life. Even during the time of Jesus, they were wondering. This text from Matthew eleven sixteen, 16, in verse 15, that we did not read, it says, The one who has ears to hear, let them hear. We need to hear this word of God. But even in verse 4 of that same chapter, Jesus is speaking to the people. And John the Baptist is wondering, is Jesus the one? And many of us can wonder, is Jesus the one? Is this story of Isaac and Jacob and Joseph, are they true? And what does Jesus say in Matthew verse 4? It says, go and tell John the Baptist this. Et Jésus le répondit, retournez après Jean et rencontrez. Tell the story. Tell the story of what you have heard and what you have seen. Qu'est-ce que vous avez entendu et qu'est-ce que vous voyez? Les aveux voyants, les paralysés marchant, les épreuves sont purifiées, les sourds entendent et les morts ressuscitant. Our spiritual lives become alive again because we can hear, because we can see, because of our diseases, our plans. And we come and we bring the les bonnes nouvelles that they annonce au pauvre, that we announce the good news to the poor. So I invite you to allow these stories to come into your hearts. And then go and tell these stories. Find the reasons and excuses that you can explain these stories to your family, your descendants, so that they are grieved when they mourn your death. We will all die. But will they know how to mourn through the scriptures that have been presented to them with the hope in stories like this? Amen.